Hello, this is Nitin Dahad with EE Times, and I'm here at the um, Altera, an Intel company booth uh, at Embedded World in um, Nuremberg, Germany, and I've had the opportunity to catch up with Sandra Rivera, the uh, new CEO of the company. Sandra, hello. Hello. Good afternoon. I'm glad to be with you today. Uh, me too. Um, so, uh, unfortunately, I couldn't attend the launch uh, of the uh, of the uh, Alter relaunch of Altera, and um, so uh, we'll probably go into that a little bit. But tell us first of all, you know, the, the big launch here, which is the the new Agile X5 uh, FPGAs for the um, with the AI fabric. Yeah. Well, well, we're very excited about our new product, and the Agile X5 actually was introduced into the market last year. We've had our biggest early access program ever. We have hundreds of customers that are using Agile X5 today and we're ramping it this year. And indeed, we have a lot of innovations in this particular device, but one of the ones that is the most exciting is the infusion of AI into the fabric of the FPGA. And of course, you can't have a conversation in the semiconductor industry or in the tech industry these days without AI. So Agile X5 is so well positioned in that mid-range of the stack with the Cordis Prime Pro software that uh, is the same tool chain that you use to program all of our other Agile X or FPGA devices, uh, in addition to the FPGA AI suite and OpenVINO. So all of that together allows our customers to include AI, IP, and IP, and rather AI applications using that same developer flow, the same tool chain, and just makes it easy for you to introduce AI into your FPGA design. Okay, so um, AI is a very broadly used term. So what, does uh, what do we actually mean by infusing AI into the fabric? Uh, could, is there any detail we can get on that? Yeah, so we have tensor blocks that's part of the DSP blocks that we have throughout the entire fabric, which is really an array. And by having that additional computational capability with those tensor blocks, in the DSP flow of the, the software and the application, it just makes it easy for you to have more of that AI type of matrix multiply functions and computational capability that you need to run AI algorithms, uh, whether it's lar large language models or computer vision or uh, any type of natural language processing. Clearly here we're showing a number of applications including robotics applications, uh, applications uh, using um, you know, depth and, and radar uh, detection, sensor fusion uh, types of implementations and wireless uh, types of implementations all of those benefit from AI, machine learning, data analytics, and all of them are made much more useful and easy to deploy with AI as part of an FPGA solution. Do you think um, uh, there's obviously been uh, other competitor companies around for a while as well. Uh, do you think you've lost time being under the Intel brand or have you been keeping going uh, with, with the development of the Agile X FPGA s series enough to compete with what's going on in the market at the moment for AI? Well, so, you know, a lot of good things happened whereas we were part of Intel and of course Intel is a wonderful company, lots of innovation, lots of brand and reach and scale and the ability for us to leverage all of that uh, has been a, a positive for certain parts of our portfolio, certainly the high end of the portfolio, the work that we've done to have leadership in communications infrastructures and data center infrastructures and cloud uh, infrastructures. Um, but. Uh, our ability now to spin out and leverage all that goodness from Intel and really kind of recommit and refocus in that mid-range and lower end of the overall stack, as well as uh, be able to partner with the ecosystem and our channel uh, and distribution uh, infrastructure uh, customers and partners is really kind of the best of both worlds. We get to operate a lot more independently with more speed and agility. We get to partner with our ecosystem and our channel. Uh, we have all of these boards here that I'm showing, just reference toolkits and, and reference designs to help accelerate the market and to move to execute more quickly, um, but with all of the backing and support from Intel. So I feel like we have the best of both worlds at this point. The, you know, the goodness of having Intel as the majority uh, investor in uh, Altera today, but with the speed and agility of a startup, which is what we are. And, and you know, there's quite a lot building up to the rebrand in February. Um, do you feel that rebrand is complete? Is there more to do? What, what, what's left? 
I am so excited about uh, you know, Altera and bringing the, the name back. And we've had such strong brand equity all of these years when we did a lot of independent research as we were thinking about how we were going to relaunch the company. Uh, it turns out that Altera still has a very strong brand and strong association with FPGA leadership. So it was very obvious that we wanted to uh, to use that name, but just the the, the look and feel, the, the modernizing of that look and feel, the the ability to leverage the Intel branding and look and feel and, and be, you know, Altera and Intel company, it's really been a lot of fun. And just the relaunch of the company, the reconnection with our customers, the opportunity here that we have for meeting with them and collaborating with them and, and thinking about how we expand the TAM for FPGA-based solutions, which of course are ideally situated for applications that, um, that are changing and environments and technologies that are continuing to evolve like wireless technology going from you know, 5G to 6G now, or of course security algorithms always changing and updating you know, programmable logic is well suited for that. And then of course AI is ever changing and as much as, you know, there's so much interest and even hype around AI, we're still at the beginning days of AI and there's so much to be discovered and so much to be innovated and the FPGA is very well suited for those types of environments. Okay. I, I mean, on, on the brand, I've, al I've always been uh, of, you know, always named it as the two companies, you and, you and your competitor, which is Altera and the other. Uh, and I was one of the first actually to write about the LCA back in 19, <laughs> uh, the Logic Seller A, yeah. 1986. But yeah, it's, it's where do we see the, um, the FPGA market for you going because, you know, as you say, there's there's a lot more. You've got the edge AI stuff today. Um, so where do you see this going? Um, obviously, it's good for, for if we talk about software defined vehicles, OD, OTA, and all that, and yeah. and all that. But what's your vision? Well, so uh, today the FPGA market is somewhere around a nine ten billion dollar TAM market annual TAM. We know that it's a growth market, so if you look at some of the, uh, the areas that the you know, FPGAs are very well suited, test and measurement uh, with all of the innovations on memory technologies and IO technologies, the transitions from PCIe Gen 5 to Gen 6, uh, the memory transitions DDR4 to 5 to DDR6, of course HBM plays uh, into that as well. Some of the UE, uh, UCIE types of interconnect technologies, CXL and the evolution of that. So all of that test and measurement market needs to come first before the products are actually designed uh, to, to uh, to you, know, you need to service that that test and measurement market. The defense industry, uh, you know, the reality of our world is that there's more investment going in defense, and that's globally. It's in the U.S. and it's in Europe and it's in India, and so that is a big growth market as well for uh, FPGA technology. Uh, when we look at wireless transitions, 5G to 5G advanced to 6G, again another yeah, big growth RAN. opportunity. Yeah. Open yeah. RAN, yeah. which yeah, we were, you know, I was actually a part of a lot of that work because I was, ran the networking business for Intel for. A number of years yeah. so uh, so lots of opportunity there when we look at industrial and robotics and manufacturing and all types of automation factory automation uh, everything that can be intelligent will be intelligent and again this is an opportunity for an FPJ that's flexible programmable scalable and I just think that the more computing platforms that are delivered to the world in all these different markets the more opportunity we have so we estimate that just AI alone, in terms of being TAM expansive, um, you know, it'll be another three billion dollars added to the annual TAM by 2028. Frankly, I think that's a bit undercalled. I think it's going to be even bigger than that. But again, just lots of growth opportunities for programmable logic, and we are the only standalone company left in the world that is focused on FPGA programmable logic technology, top to bottom. And now, uh, let's talk a little bit about the business. So. Um uh, culturally, it's almost like a startup again, I guess. Yeah. But uh, how uh, are you going to be sort of separating that sort of corporate Intel and the uh, Altera? an Intel company startup. Yeah, well, you know, as I said, we have the best of both worlds. There's so much to be uh, harnessed from Intel and just that innovation gene and that love of, of uh, investing and enabling ecosystems, right? It's in the DNA of Intel, it's in the DNA of Altera, lower 
barriers to entry, increase market participation, accelerate the rate of innovation. Like we, we have that gene, we want to continue to invest. As they said, we're showing a number of boards and reference designs and toolkits here um, because we grow when our partners and our ecosystem uh, grows. But, um, but you know, there's a lot that we're simplifying. Being a, a smaller, more focused company, we want to take some of the complexity out of the operating model and decision making and even the organizational structure. And so a lot of the, the focus in our architectures and designs is how do we make very complex technology very simple to consume, very simple to uh, to ramp and deploy in the industry, and that's a lot of the, the mindset of the team. So they're pretty energized, I'm pretty energized by the fact that we are a startup and we have that kind of customer obsession that you have as a startup, but we're not a high beta startup. Like, we have 40 years of history, thousands and thousands of customers, you know, billions in revenue, uh, a leadership roadmap, and so, you know, we really feel like we have this golden window of opportunity to build and grow from here. That sounds really good. Um, I mean, is there anything you can say about your your 12-month, 24-month roadmap? Well, uh, as I as I said, right now we've introduced into the market a, a complete waterfall from Agile X9 at the highest end, Agile X7, uh, which is ramping that, uh, last year, Agile X5 ramping this year, and then Agile X3 to address that uh, that more power constrained and and footprint and cost constrained part of the market. So all of that supported by the same software tool chain. But the other thing that we announced here at at this event is the fact that we are extending the life of our Max and Cyclone uh, products, which you know, are just, you know, we've shipped millions and millions of, of those units over uh, many years, and we've extended the life of those out to 2040 because our customers want that longevity and want that assurance of supply, and uh, and so we've been able to commit to that. And just the, the that supply resilience and assurance is something that, you know, we all lived through uh, over the, the pandemic. Um, we're sort of working through now because there has been a lot of, of uh, inventory building. So this year will be one of those years where in the first half of the year, customers will be transitioning or burning off some of that inventory. Still a lot of demand, but we will see the business pick up towards the, the second half of this year as they burn through that inventory. Uh, but for us to be able to have so much innovation, so much of the supply resilience and capacity that we've committed to customers, not just on the new devices, but on the, the traditional devices is a very strong value proposition for the customers. Well, Sandra, thank you very much. Thank you so much. It was good to talk with you.